Uh, good, good evening, and thank you. First, I would like to thank you, Mr. Fernando, for his kind invitation, and also from the Thai ambassador for your kind introductions as well. Uh, I know it's late, but I would like to start, and if you cannot any, understand anything, please let me know. This is uh, what we first, sorry, okay. This is all Thailand, and as you have been introduced, we have about 12% of the GDP that is in the food trade business. If you look at the area, we are about one-fifth of Argentina, but the population almost as twice. So we are a small country compared to Argentina. The question is how we become the food exporting of, of the world. So it's a good opportunity to share with you our experience and let we can learn together. Uh, the first thing we'd like to know is in Thailand, when we talk about agro-industry, it's not just agricultural produce. It's not corn, wheat, rice, or anything. We grow from there for quite a while. We'll say it like 30 years ago that we think that we cannot survive on agricultural products only. So in Thailand, what we're talking about, eco industry, we include the food science and technology. We're talking about product development, product innovations. We're talking about biotechnology, which is currently so strong in Argentina now, I would say that. And after this, we include food and feed but this, this, this is not all. What's important for the food business is packaging technology and material as well. We're talking about food value creation. This is how we become food exporter of the world. For the food value creation come with the food supply chain management. And the last in Thailand that we're talking about now, we include the textile and fashion. This is included in agro-industry. So let me share what we're talking about. This is information about the Thai Manu food manufacturer in Thailand. The largest food manufacturer is only 3%, very small. The small enterprise is 91%, but this doesn't inhibit us to become the world food exporter. So we will see what's happened then. If you look down for the exporting value, this in 2013, there's we rank about 12. Now maybe it dropped to 13 or 14 ranks, but that doesn't matter. When we look at the Thailand top five exporting, we have rice, we have sugar, we have shrimp, we have canned tuna. You can see that it's spread out. It not only limits to, to one crop that takes 70%. So we, we try to spread our agricultural commodities so we can learn in the difficult time what we can change or shift our, our agriculture cultural produce. We have the projection of the growth about 6.2% of this uh, exporting of food in this coming year, uh, 20, 2014 years. And the rice exporting is slow. We have a competitor from Vietnam, but trim still going on, canton still going on. Let's we move ahead to the prediction of what's going to happen. For Thailand, we are a small country. And when we are a small country, we have to think opposite. So we have to think big. This is what we have to do. So not only for Thailand, if we think about producing food and supply for the Thailand, we stay like that. But if we think big, what's happened? So we have the ASEAN. So we think about the region. And after we think about the regional, we think about the world marketing. So within a few slides, I hope we can share what we are thinking about, what the food industry is talking about. So we cannot stay with the agricultural produce. We are the start of the value-added product, and we're talking about the food value chain that will bring the Thailand for the world. This is one thing that always amazing my friends from other countries. When we're talking about Thailand has a sea coast, and in the sea coast of the Gulf of Thailand, we don't have tuna. And how come Thailand become the largest world exporting of the tuna? If you're looking at we the largest tuna processing in the world, TUF is Thai Union Frozen Company. We took take about 19% of the world production of canned tuna. We don't have any tuna in our sea. So how, how we become on, on that? So we have top five shrimp processor. We are one top five frozen seafood there. Look here, we have 12 facilities in eight countries. Not only in Thailand, we have it in California, we have it in South Africa, we have it in Indonesia. This is how we think about the business of the food. It's not only within our country. We have about nine fleet 
fishing fleet around the world, which supply the tuna to each factory. In Thailand, we also have, have this uh, can factory. And you look at all these, John West, this is what owned by TUF or Thai uh, Union Frozen Company. All these brand is owned by Thai Union Frozen Company. Okay. So let's come back and see. This is the brief information about Thailand. And let's think about Thailand cannot stay alone. So we look in around and see what is the marketing opportunity and what's going to happen. So this is what we call the AEC, ASEAN Economics Community. And when you're talking about the ASEAN, ASEAN is not Asian. ASEAN stands for the Association for Southeast Asian Nations. And this is about 10 nations in a small group of the Southeast ASEAN. So, oops, sorry. So within this, this group of ASEAN, if you look closer, Thailand is right there and the exporting is about 13.2% compared to other countries. So when we move to the ASEAN country, the ASEAN population is about 9% of the world population, but it takes about 2.6% of the world GDP. ASEAN doesn't stay only these 10 countries. We expand, so we call it ASEAN plus three. When we say plus three, we include China, Japan, and Korea. We have a conference, a meeting with the ASEAN plus three. And with this ASEAN plus three, we're taking up about 31% of the world population, majority, of course, from China. But this, we take about 31% and increase the, the world GDP to the 18%. And we do not stop at the ASEAN plus three. We expand to the ASEAN plus six, which include India. So tomorrow our friends from India will talk about the India. We include India, Australia, and New Zealand. So we become ASEAN plus three, ASEAN plus six. And with the ASEAN plus six, we take about 50% of the world populations, 22% of the world GDP. And with this, now that's why we're talking about the Asia or the ASEAN plus six, which we can comparable to the EU market or comparable to the U.S. market. They are less population, they are more efficient, but if you look at the world GDP, 22% of the Asians, 26% of the EU, and 24% of the U.S. So this is how we can compete with the marketing. So from looking at the marketing strategy, what else that we have to look at? The red line is the, let's see, the world average of the economic chain rate in the GDP. The red line is the world average. If you're looking at the ASEAN, the ASEAN is the, the dotted line, the last one there, when we pointed out. So the average of the ASEAN is a key growth in the GDP growth is above the world average. I think that's maybe one reason that Fernando thing, uh, it's good to talk about Argentina and the Asia because the average growth of the GDP is higher than the world average. So now let's look how Thai approach the global marketing. This is when we're talking about the, the uh, value of the food and f food and beverage. For the food and beverage value chain is, is about twenty trillion dollar. This is in year twenty eleven. But the keyword that we're looking at for the Thai food business is the first thing we're looking about. We're talking about the sustainability. When we talk about the sustainability and then the next thing around the circle is the health and wellness. On this health and wellness, we know that the globalization, uh, let's change too quick. Okay. Let's come to the food safety issue. So this is a circle of the quality that we have to stay on. You know that right now China come up so strong. China is a huge country. If they start on the food production, Thailand is just a small pea. We cannot stay survive. So what the strategy for the Thai food industry is food safety, food quality, and sustainability. And then we now heading directly to the health and wellness. As our Japanese friend talking about, the majority of the world will lead to the nutrition, to leading to the older generation people. So we're looking for the health and wellness. So the key words is safety, sustainability, to health and wellness, and that's globalization. And within this, you see the each agricultural product coming in. You have the food packaging coming up there, and you have the food exporting and everything. This is how we have to approach the world marketing. Otherwise, we cannot stay within this competition world. And this is the key trend. When we look at the ASEAN plastic or the Asian market, the thing that we have to face with is a highly price sensitive down there at the below. 
Within the market, we are not rich people, not like EU or the US, so the, it's very highly price sensitive market, so we have to compete with the price. But at the same time, we have the opportunity for the health and halal or the ethnic food. Remember, in the southern part of the ASEAN is the Indonesian country, Dubai, Malaysia, Arab Emirates, all these are halal country. So this is one thing, the approach that Thai people have to think about, the halal, the ethnic food. And we cannot stay alone. So in the middle, we're talking about the growth of the foreign direct investment in resulting of the food industry growth. So we welcome a lot of foreign investment from Japan. There's a major contribution to us for the direct investment in, in out. And the expansion, as our previous uh, presentation, talking about the logistic is the most important thing to us now. Together to work with the ASEAN, to work with the Asia, or to working with Argentina, that I will include in a uh, slide after this, we're talking about the logistic system, and that's come the world to work. This food value chain and the food supply chain management. If we cannot work on the logistic, we just stay there, we cannot survive. Okay, so let's talk about next. This is the influence force that's shaping the food and the beverage marketing. The first thing is involved in the starting of the AEC or ASEAN Economics Community. And then we're looking at the external pressure. That's why we include the ASEAN Plus 3. Right now, China is having a free trade agreement with the ASEAN communities. And also we're talking about with the, the Korean people. The free trade area is coming up with the ASEAN within the ASEAN, within the China, together with China, together with the Koreans, and also we're talking about the co comprehensive economic partnership with Japan. And for the India, free trade agreement also in place that we're talking about that. Mm -hmm. Now the impact, when we're talking about the ASEAN economics community and the ASEAN, what is the impact that Thailand has to change and adapt it for ourselves? So the first thing is, with expanded single market, or what you call, we, so the first thing is we're talking about the immersion of the virgin market. The new market that is new for the Thai food, and I would say Argentina is also the virgin market for Thai food as well. What I'm talking about of my friends here, you don't have many Thai restaurants in, in Buenos Aires at all. I, I couldn't find a, perhaps one. But if you go to the US, if you go to the UK, you find the Thai restaurant everywhere. So that is one thing that, well, from the Asia, maybe in the future we're talking about with Argentina. The second thing we're talking about is liberalization of the existing market. In the past, we cannot send the food to Malaysia, to Indonesia, or even to the China. But now we're talking about all these existing markets, at least within the ASEAN economics, within the Asia, and the coming future to the EU or to the US country. The third thing is the harmonization of the standard. We're talking with the Food Science and Technology Group, the Food Association, that we need to harmonize the standard. This is not the regulation, not the authority, but we're talking about the commercial people together, the business people, the harmonizing of the standard. And the local player, this is the fourth one, the local player. We're talking about how we move the medium-scale industry to become the large-scale industry. This is the major force. Remember, we only have 3% of the last food company. But if you can move the medium-scale food industry to become the major food industry, that will bring up the, the speed. And number fifth is increase the diversity and the ethnic of the flavor. As our ambassador also mentioned, Thai foods crave for the spices, herbs, or the blend and the balance of the food. And this ethnic food in ASEAN country is, is well accepted, I think also in the EU and in the US market. And I hope in the future for the Latin America, they will accept all this ethnic food that's coming up. And number six is important for the food industry. We're talking about rationalization in manufacturing. Our food manufacturing cannot stay in Thailand and spreading out around the world. So within a few slides, the coming slide will show you how Thai move our food industries and spreading out around the ASEAN country and increasing demand, increasing our foreign uh, direct investment. So the impact of the ASEAN economics community, the blue line is, is a regional hub. So we think of Thailand as a regional hub. The second thing is in the blue line, the singular production base. 
we can produce this in Laos, in Myanmar, in Vietnam, or in Thailand, and then we can spread this out, depend on where that we're looking at in the ASEAN region. And that's the world of the food supply chain management and the logistics come into the play. And right now, it's a key, key role that we have to talking about. The second thing come down there is the way of the greater consolidate of the market share through the multinational corporations. We are not working alone. We cannot survive within this competitive world. So we're talking about the collaboration with the Japanese food company and also with other food company. And of course, at the end, I would think this is a good important to talking about Argentina and Thailand, food business together, the joint venture that is coming. And for the ASEAN Economics Community, people predict about the year 2015, but I would say it will be delayed. So we still have time to catching up with all this. So this is three, th three things that's happened to the ASEAN Economics Community. And now before we switching for the other part, is this is the summary of the strength of the Thai food industry. The first thing is the raw material. If we cannot find locally, then we'll find around the area. And then the second thing is the skill and hard working force. And then the last thing which is most important is quality and safety. We don't have the issue of the quality and safety yet. And I hope it stay that way because that will bring us to the competitive world. So this is what we strategic investment plan for the agribusiness. The first thing is business alliance among the ASEAN country. The second thing is we have to sustainable this business model. So the sustainable business food model for us is the value added. We need to stay on the safety, the standard, and finally make our own brand. Remember the tuna slide? We did not make our own brand yet, but it's coming future that we have to start our own brand. Otherwise, people will not know that this is come from, from Thailand. So right now, if you go into the Asian country, you will see the brand, for example, CPF, that is Thai brand that is already started, the C, P, and F. So the third thing we're talking about, the strategic plan for Thailand is the management. And this is come how to manage the raw material around the world, the global purchasing or global procurement of the raw material. This is not happened to new. This is happened around the world. For example, the, the Mars and Mar company already established the base in Bangkok, uh, no, in Thailand, and with this, they're looking at all the raw material in the Asian country, and then supply this raw material back to Australia, back to the U.S., to produce the food over there. And remember this morning, uh, our friend from Japan, Tasia, also mentioned that Chile sent the salmon, raw salmon, to process in Thailand. And after the process in Thailand, we ship this to Japan as a major customer for us. So this is how the business alignment comes, alliance comes, and the business uh, sustainable and looking at how we can manage the supply chain. And the last thing that this is not arena, but we have to talk about the human capacity building, and that's the last thing. Now, this is when we look at the ASEAN, we're investing at about 29% in the food and sugar. Thailand invested 29% in this ASEAN country. The rest of investment is in printing, electronic, and this other chemical thing. And this is how we actually done in year 2012. In year 2012, we're looking at the exporting down there. You're looking at the exporting in year 2007 until year uh, 2012. The exporting from Thailand to the U.S. and EU markets changing from 31% down to 22%. In the past, we do not have the ASEAN community, so we have to export to the EU, to the market, uh, to the US market, which is a long distance. The logistic is not good for us. But when we expand the market in the, the Asian country, you're looking at the ASEAN plus six, we increase the export from 42% to 52%. So we shift dynamic of the marketing of the logistic of, of the uh, food exporting business. This is how we looking, the new market has so we have to take this opportunity for the new marketing. And this, the logistic and efficient system, we have to reduce the logistic cost and we have to increase the efficiency and productivity for us. The few slides we show you how we work on this. Food value chains. This is how we integrate the food value chain business for, for us. We are not a major corn grower, but we 
grew some corns, and we start of the feed business. So the company called like CP or the CPF company in in Thailand, we start with the di distribution of the feed, and then we continue as the breeding of the small chicks, and then after this feed, and then smalling of feed, and then of the breeding, and then we expand it to the poultry farm to the uh, chicken husbandry, and then later on after all these three established in in Thailand also in the region, then we expand to the food processing. The first thing is the chicken processing uh, the meat, and then later on we said we cannot stay there, so we continue to the value added. So all these uh, chicken product or this meat product, and then we become branding and then go to the marketing. This is how we're talking about the food value chain business, and this is all complete within Thailand. And after complete within Thailand, we expand it out. So the next slide, we're talking about the seed business. Remember, we start from the seed, and then we go from the seed to the feed, and then from the feed to the farm. So this is we already established the corn business in Myanmar, in Laos, in Vietnam, also for the feed business, and in Cambodia and in, in Indonesia. This is around our friend, the hybrid of the corn seed, the hybrid of the rice seed, and also all other horticultural products. And when we start from that, then we continue to the feed, to the breeding, and to the farm, to the animal husbandry. So this is what we're looking about, the manage of the closed system, on the left hand side of the poultry system, evaporative cooling system, and control, automatically control. The second one, we uh, down there to the pork or the pig farms, we're still using evaporative cooling system, but on the right hand with the black dome, the black dome is what we use to produce the biogas. So the waste from the pig farm, we underground the tunnel and all this waste go to the biogas production and this has been practiced. So the keyword is sustainability or environment concern. So you cannot just produce the pig farm or the pork without concern of anything. So it's the biogas production. This is practiced in Thailand in, in around the region. Down there is the managed in the core system or the probiotic farm of this stream in Thailand and also develop the growth rate of the shrimp. We have the strong research in, in the area of the shrimp growing aquaculture. Now there is highly yield of the fish of the aquaculture. So the keyword is at the bottom is create a standard. Traceability of all these poultry, all these pigs, all these shrimps, all these fish is a traceability and the safety for the consumer. So start from the seed, we go to the feed, and we go to the farm, and go to the farm. This is how we start the agribusiness in the ASEAN country. In the Indonesian on the left hand, you will see that we have already have the animal feed plant, the aquaculture, the livestock, the food processing plant. In Vietnam, we already have the animal feed plant, fully integrated husbandry or farming, fishery processing plant, food processing plant, and shrimp hatchery. And down there, you see the similar thing in Malaysia. In Laos, we already have chicken farms in Vietnam, in Vieng Chan, in the capital city of the Laos, and also producing a lot of eggs. This is how we expand. We have the model in Thailand, and then we say we cannot stay there, so we expand to other countries, start from the seed, the feed, the farm, and now the food industry in, in Vietnam and Philippines. And this is the example of the value-added product. When we say the value-added product, it's not just in the supermarket but go to the convenience style. I think Argentina will come to that, that point. Because what is convenience style? You just pop in the microwave. All this food product is microwave ready. You just throw in the microwave, chill or frozen. All these look nice in, in the picture. This is all microwave double product, even the rice or even the spaghetti or even the, the ham and chicken. So this is when we're talking about the value added product. It's convenience for the consumer. It's not just fried chicken, and when you take it home, and then you still have to put the oil in, and then deep fry it again. Oh, that is the old day. Right now, we already half fry, everything is ready, pop in the microwave, it's ready for the use. This is an example from the TUF, the company who made the tuna. We are not just producing the canned tuna. Not the canned tuna will sell anymore. So this is the product that is made from the tuna by the TUF company. And this product, again, is chilled or frozen and ready to cook, ready to, to wave in, in a, your microwave oven at, back home. 
even trim s a t e you have the tempera trim. Well, we are not only using the full size. We use a lot of、uh, chef in in this company. So if you looking at the food business company in Thailand, we don't only have the engineering, food science, technologies, but we have chef together in in the company to develop this product. And our last few slide, we're talking about Thailand and Argentina. As our ambassador has talking about, this is the trade value in year last year. Well, you said you won because we have the deficit between Thailand trade and Argentina trade. We lose about 28 millions, but we don't care because this is what we need from Argentina. We need an import, a good import from Argentina to to work for us. So the trade value jump up 33 percent last year. And the import from Argentina jumped up 66 percent, and Thailand deficit is 28 million US dollar. But we love it because、uh, what Argentina export to Thailand again. If you're not talking about soybean, is we lost somewhere. So soybean play important role for us. The second from the soybean is soybean meal or the cake, whatever. So this is we use a lot for the, our feed system. We will talk about that later. And then also a small amount of meat and meat product, frozen seafood, and what you import from Thailand. Now、oh, it's not critical. So it's just automobile part, electronic or something. Now let's take a look. This is the study from Brian Kev, the company in the business. So they in last year, so they're focusing what is the important investor for the Thai. And suddenly, Argentina names come up in the food area. This is surprise to me as well. Because we think the U.S., the Brazil, the India, yes, but Argentina come up, and this is not from our university. This is from the private business company. So Argentina do play important investor for for Thai food business. I would like to see more and more strong. Because when we're looking at, I'm talking with the embassy a few days ago that we don't have a major Thai investor in Argentina yet, and we don't have a strong business going on, which means we still have a big room for this business venture together. So this is soybean、uh, utilization.、So、you wonder why we import the soybean, and Thailand is small country. The population is only 60, 68 million people. We do not eat that much soy. So what do, are we doing with your soybean or soy milk cake?、Uh, a little bit small, but if you're looking, 90% we import. Soybean, we import from either Brazil or from US or Argentina, or quite a bit from Argentina as well. When you go up there, we use edible part most of it right now, 95 percent or something. But when you coming down there, if you remember the talk yesterday, there's a Brazil company in the biotechnology people. They're talking about the use of the soy bean and the soy product in other industrial use, and this is already started in Thailand. Not a A big business yet, but it's already start. So from the down there at the bottom line, it's looking at the oil basis. From the oil basis, we talking about the cosmetic, the cosmetic from soybean. And that's interesting. The the coating, the packaging, the printing application. That's why we talking about agro industry in Thailand. We're not talking about the food. We're talking about the food and feed and packagings and product innovation. So the Soy Inc. already started the business in Thailand. Not a big one, but it's coming into the major role. Let's swing back to the edible part. For edible part, it's about 30 percent that we use the soybean to produce a protein base. When we say the protein base, we go up there for the fresh and green and dry. That's the brand of the company in Thailand. We use the soybean. The second one, we use it in bakery and confectionery product. Well, cookie with the soybean, 30% of the soybean flour, soy flour in there. We are talking about snack food. We have the major extrusion, what we call the、uh, texturized vegetable protein, that is made from soybean, soybean flour, soybean、uh, defat soy flour, and. We already have the machine, huge machine in Thailand with the extrusion product. All these extrude products, so we use in the bakery, confectionery. The majority of the food and beverage go to the drink, the milk drink, and the non-dairy products. Those are three major company in Thailand produce these. The the Vita milk, the Vita, you know, is for life, and then the milk, and that's majority is from the soybean drink. 
seasonal and sourced with Ajinomono Company, which is from Japan, tofu. The oil based parts take 70%. So from 100%, 30% only go to the protein, but 70% go to the oil business. And when you go to the oil business, we go to the food additives, not just the soybean oil, we call talking about the emulsifier. So this is the lexitin that you can extract from the soybean. This is the thing that we can use in the food processing industry. The edible oil, the salad dressing. So this is another not just soy, soy oil, but it's go to the salad dressing. And even go to the shortening to use in the bakery products. So all these brands, either Thai or either Japanese uh, alliance with us, and down there, the trend will move down there. Once we saturate with the food area, then we will move to the other industry area. So this is the work that we're talking about. What is the value chain? So when we import the soybean, we have to talk about the value chain. It's not just soy drink, and that's it. So I think this is one thing that Yesterday, your friends here in Argentina talking about the biotechnology of the soil. This is important. You have a large majority of the soybean here. If you can create this own business, I think you'll be the gateway of the Latin America. you gateway send it to the U.S. or something else. Uh, this is another part of the soy meal using in our feed industry. 30% we use the soy production in Thailand, but 70% we import from Brazil, Argentina, and in India. This is used for animal feed together. And when they're talking about the animal feed, we're talking about the aquaculture, not just the cattle, not just the, the chicken. And this is uh, the major company. The first one is the CPF that I'm talking about, the, their own brand. And then the second one, the third one is Better Crow. Better Crow is good in a chicken farm in pork, and also they were expanding to the cattle in coming futures. And we use 20%, 24% of soy in our feed system. So you can see how it's critical role. Remember the food value chain, we start from the seed, and then we import the soy bean, uh, what you call the soy bean meal, soy bean meal or the cake. And this is 24% in our feed system. Now, Fernando told me that we have to predict it to the year 2030, otherwise I will not escape from here. So this is the prediction that we're talking about, the growth of the feed business in Thailand. The growth of the feed business, well, it's actually it's not in Thailand, but it's around the region that we're talking about. So the steady growth is there. You know the new country like Cambodia, Myanmar, and Vietnam, they're expanding. The increase in the percent GDP is much higher than Thailand. Thailand is maybe 3 or 4%, but in Vietnam, maybe tomorrow, our friends from Vietnam can tell us they grow up almost 10% increase in the GDP. So the, for the feed, the marketing is growing up, and which means we will need the soybeans and soybean meals from Argentina. And this is the soybean. 15.4% growth per year, this is within Thailand. And the prediction go to the year 2010s. No. We have to go to 2030, otherwise we will not be happy. So this is a prediction, go to the year 2030s. So it in, increased steadily. So this is what we forecast, not me. I mean, my colleague forecast that we still need these million tons of soybean and soybean meal in the Thailand. The little yellow one at the bottom, you see that is the local soybean production. Similar to tuna. We cannot find tuna in Thai. We only have small amount of the soybean, but we import. We find the raw material, and we import the raw material. The question is where is the yellow line the local soybean is? It's non-GMO. So I don't know about the future of the soybean of Argentina, but I would say if you can make non-GMO soybean, Thailand will be one of your importer. We, we also want this non-GMO. But this is your policy. We don't know which policy you're going on. Okay. So soybeans still play a critical role for us. We still import from Argentina, that's for sure. And until year 2030, we still need you all to produce a soybean for us. So we have coming to the last four slide, which we'll talk, I will let you know what we're thinking about. 
The first thing is limitation and policy. This is also to Thailand. I don't know about Argentina, but if you have this, you have to be careful about the, the quota and policy of the tax for the soybean and soybean meal. This is critical for Thailand because sometimes we, we got this trade barrier. When you're talking about you increase the tax, you're putting up the quota for each country. This means all the price can go up or the price can go down. So this is critical that the government sometimes have to sit down and talk about the policy. We don't have the soybeans in Thailand that much, so we depend on Argentina or Brazil. And for the second line, you can see how the competitive of the world, now we're talking about the cost advantages. We're talking about price plus logistic to Thailand. And right now, what surprised me is the price plus logistic from Argentina compared to the U.S., we prefer Argentina because the logistic cost plus the price of the soybean to Thailand is still cheaper than the U.S. So we will reduce, reduce the import from the U.S. and increase the, the import from Brazil or Argentina. You have to compete with Brazil anyway. That's your friend. So <laughs> let's friend talk to each other. Okay. So the third line is the agri-food business agreement between Argentina. I think after this, we will have someone to come and talk about the ASEAN Mercosur. So this is quite important. If you think of Thailand at the ASEAN hub, I don't know Brazil or Argentina, but I prefer Argentina to be the hub for this Mercosur. What do you call it? Mercosur. <laughs> I'm sorry for that pronunciation. But this is also in, in, in the regions. Can Argentina and Thailand link to this hub? We ship to Argentina, Argentina shipping up, and then you send something to Thai. So this three slide will summary what I'm thinking about Thailand and Argentina. So there's four points. The first point is about agriculture and food products, which means soybean, soybean meal is still continue to play important role, and potential for the quality meat product. Right now, we bring the meat product from Australia, from Japan. The Wagyu is a top quality that we have it. But again, you know that the Argentina and Brazil has a good meat quality. So how is quality compared to the logistic cost? Then we can import this. So the meat product and the quality meat is still, I think that's coming in, in the future as well. I know that uh, your production in meat is going down because some of the farmers switching to the soybean. But I would say try to keep the balance. You have a lot of uh, competitors in soybean, but not many competitors in the quality meat product. So keep balance there and we're looking for. So the keyword is quality. We're looking for the quality. Like the Tatsuya said this morning from the Japan, if we're not looking for the quality, we're looking at the mass production, we cannot go, no, we go nowhere. So the quality is still the key keyword for the food. The second thing we think is the most important is the business development, the joint venture in the agri-food business company. You have a good financial support in Argentina. You have a good banking system, and your biotechnology company is so great. But at the same time, in Thailand, we have the ASEAN hub in the Thailand. We don't see many things. So if you're Argentina investment, We'll go to Thailand and joint venture with the Thai company already established in the ASEAN market. You can use us as a hub and you can learn from us. And at the same time, what the Thai food business do, you were looking for the partner around the world. So if you have the food manufacturer here that want to expand, want to do the joint venture business, we can talk to the company in Thailand, come here. We, we are not going to build a new factory. We are going to use your own food factory here. But with the technology we know, with the experience that we have, we will learn and share and setting this up. For one example, the, the company that we're talking about, the tuna, or just last month, uh, we have the instant noodle in Thailand. The company who made the instant noodle in Thailand already make a joint venture with the company in uh, which country is that? Hungary. In Hungary, we're setting up the food business company for the instant noodle, which is the border of the Hungary, Austria, and then go to the Czechoslovakia. So this is the thing that I think will work joint venture business for the food agribusiness. Either go to the Thailand as a hub or come to Argentina as a hub for the Latin America. And for this, we need a sustainable business model. It's just joint venture and then go. No, we're talking about the value added. 
product. We're talking about the safety and standard and making the new brand. So for this second proposition for the business development, the keyword will be with looking at the value chain and also talking about the sustainability of the future. And the third one that I think the Thailand and Argentina can do, I think Ministry of Science from Argentina already mentioned yesterday, and also our Thai ambassador talking about the technology and human resource development. Even though it's not the arena for this agronomy, but we think it's quite important talking about innovation, product development. So science technology collaboration is important. Otherwise, we will not see the whole food value chain development in, in this area. And we're not talking about the food science or agriculture culture, we're talking about the biotechnology and packaging technology as well. Packaging technology and product innovation, this will bring the, the new arena for the value-added product. And the last thing, this is uh, my what, third day or fourth day in Buenos Aires, but I think we see a very similar thing about Thai and Argentinians. We love eating. We love going out and eating. We enjoy eating food. We see a lot of restaurants here. If you go to the Bangkok, go to Thailand, you will see the lots of restaurants as well. And we enjoy a pleasure in, in eating of the, this food. So this very similar thing of the culture exchange. We don't see any Thai restaurant here. We have the Thai chef school at the university, different university there. We have the cuisine training. And the same thing that Argentina food is not spreading out in Thailand yet. So you have a good opportunity for the meat and wine. Go to the Thai people. What Thai people love drinking and alcoholic beverage. I think we are number two in the world now for drinking of alcohol per capita in the world. I think after German, German, Thai, then go to Japan, I think, for alcohol consumption. Anyway, so the fourth one is the people. So let's go back. This is, the, let's see. So the first one is quality in the agricultural produce. The second one of the value chain, sustainable of the business model. The third one we talk about the science, technology, collaboration in product innovations. And the last one we talk about the food culture exchange or the people, exchange of the people. So this is almost my last slide. I hope. So this is my personal view, not from university. So my personal view think you are highly potential in the world food production. Your potential is higher than Thai. Looking at the area, you are fifth time larger than Thai. You have smaller population, so it means you still have a lot of land to grow all this food for the world. And then you have the good natural resources, you have good land, fertile, you have the sea coastal area, you have in the temperate zone, Thailand is so hot, if you go down there, you, the temperature is almost what, 37 degrees Celsius, so you get crazy there. So you have a good temperature here in Argentina, you have the good land, you have the good sea, and you have the advantage of agriculture, food, and biotechnology. Yesterday, I'm, I would say I'm impressed with the biotechnology people you have in, in Argentina. So this is a, the trend that you can go there. And you have room, a big room, for the value-added, innovative product. You can do this here, or you can join venture with the Thai business people. We can learn from each other on, on what we have. And the strategy for, I think this is for Argentina, is you have to look at the food value chain, of the food value chain, and later on you can talk about the the value chain management. Value chain first and value chain management. And with this, I think you will unleash the full potential of Argentina. I would say Thailand will become smaller than Argentina in the future, but right now we, we want to be a partnership. So my last slide will be, this is like our ambassador said, this is what the Thai policy is, kitchen of the world. So we're looking for the food quality, and I think Argentina, we're looking for the food quality. And I think we offer the Thailand as a food hub for the ASEAN, for Argentina. And there's opportunity to join venture with Thailand. So, muchas gracias. Thank you.